It's the third and final day in Budapest. We have seen a lot of interesting places in the last two days, and it was an absolute joy exploring this beautiful city. We checked out of our apartment, left our bags at the storage facility, and headed straight to the city to take a look at the State Opera House. Built in a neo-Renaissance style, the Hungarian State Opera House, also known as the Royal Opera House, was designed by Miklos Jibber, who was a renowned Hungarian architect of the 19th century. Funded by the city of Budapest and by the Emperor Franz Joseph I, the construction began in 1875 and opened to the public on the 27th of September, 1884. Today, it is the second largest opera house in Budapest and in Hungary. It is a richly decorated building and considered to be one of the architect's masterpieces. Although in size and capacity it is not the greatest, however, in beauty and the quality of acoustics, the Budapest Opera House is considered to be amongst the finest in the world. Ornamentation includes paintings and sculptures by leading figures of Hungarian art, including Betlen Seke, Mortan and Karoly Lotz. The auditorium holds 1,261 people and according to a study done in the 1970s by a group of international engineers, it has the third best acoustics in Europe after La Scala in Milan and Palais Garnier in Paris. The guided tours of the buildings are running almost every day and you can take them in six different languages – English, German, Spanish, French, Italian and Hungarian. It was now time to visit the most important church building in Hungary and one of the most significant tourist attractions in Budapest, St. Stephen's Basilica. The site of today's basilica was a theatre in the 18th century by the name of Hetz Theatre. A wealthy citizen by the name of Janusz Zitterbers built a temporary church in this location. In the late 1810s, about a thousand people formed the Lipotvaros parish and began fundraising and making plans for the future church. At first, the building was supposed to be named after Saint Leopold, the patron saint of Austria, but the plan was changed at the last minute, so it was named Saint Stephen's Basilica, in honor of the first king of Hungary, whose mummified right hand is still on display. Saint Stephen I was the last Grand Prince of Hungarians between 997 and the year 1000 and the first king of Hungary from the year 1000 until his death in 1038. Stephen was the only son of Grand Prince Geyser and his wife Sarol, who descended from a prominent family of Gulosh. Although both of his parents were baptized, Stephen was the first member of his family to become a devout Christian. And there it was, the right hand of Saint Stephen I of Hungary. The year of his birth is uncertain, but it is believed that he was born around 975 in Estergom. The basilica is rich in fine art. Here you can see the works of Karoly Sene, Bertrand Seke and Morton. The dome above the sanctuary shows the representation of the Lord God. This masterpiece is the work of Karoly Lotz. We even managed to witness a wedding ceremony in this incredible church. As most of the basilica was reserved for the wedding ceremony, we proceeded to the top of the dome for the 360 degree view of the city. Hot. 
equal in height to the Hungarian Parliament building. It is one of the two tallest buildings in Budapest, standing at 96 meters tall. This symbolizes that the worldly and spiritual thinking are of the same importance. The facade of this neoclassical church is anchored by two large bell towers. The southern tower houses Hungary's largest bell, weighing over nine tons. Emotions were running high as we were taking in the incredible views. It was our last day and we felt like we only just scratched the surface and there was so much more to see in this beautiful city. The wedding ceremony was coming to an end and it was time for us to leave as well. We headed to the riverbank to take a look at the Shoes on the Danube Bank Memorial. Conceived by film director Kan Toge and erected on 16th of April 2005, the Shoes on the Danube Bank Memorial in Budapest was created by sculptor Gule Power to honour the Jews who were massacred by the fascist Hungarian militia belonging to the Arrow Cross Party during the Second World War. They were ordered to take off their shoes, as they were valuable and could be resold by the militia after the massacre, and were shot at the edge of the water so that their bodies fell into the river and were carried away. The memorial represents their shoes left behind on the river bank. <laughs> the Giro d'Italia was in full swing and the city was buzzing with festivities. Named Insula Leporum or Island of Rabbits before the 14th century, the Margaret Island is two and a half kilometers long and spans the area between the Margaret and Arpad Bridge in the middle of the Danube. Its present appearance was developed through the connection of three separate islands the Pesto, the painter, the Furdo, the bath, and the Nulak, the rabbits, during the end of the 19th century to control the flow of the Danube. The island is mostly covered by landscape parks and is a very popular recreational area. There is a lot to do and see here, but we only had time to watch the musical fountain, which is a UNESCO protected site. This was the end of our trip, and we couldn't help to think and reflect on everything we have seen during this week. The rooftops of Jor, the beautiful Lake Balaton and Tihain Abbey, and of course, the incredible Budapest. There is so much more to see and discover, so we definitely will come back for more.
thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed this series. Join us next time to do it all over again as we will be exploring the incredible Switzerland. Take care. Thank you.